you guys, it's just, it's not working. It's not working for me. It's not doing what I had hoped. So let's change that. It never fails. The moment that I want to film and, you know, be productive, somebody has to be working on the lawn. Tell me why. Is it loud? Is it bothering you? Because it's bothering me. Hey everyone, it's Lizzie and welcome back to my channel. Let me first address, you all are seeing my face. So this is going to be a talk through q and a i'm going to answer a very highly requested question that i had received over on my instagram you guys if you are not following me over on naturally lizzie 0922 i highly recommend you follow me over there i do post other type of content and information and inspiration that is what that page is all about and i hope that you guys find value in that and i welcome you to join me over there as i mentioned on my instagram if you missed it i had talked about me switching from multiple cash envelopes for my variable spending to one cash envelope if you have been with me for quite some time since the beginning of my channel, then you would be familiar with the one cash envelope method. This is the method that my husband and I had learned from Jordan Page. It's just a simple, easy way to handle your finances, the day-to-day -day spending. And I just wanna go back to that and I'm gonna explain why. This video, I will also be answering some of your questions that you submitted over on my Instagram. So we got a few and and let's just dive in. So there are some budgeting methods that may not work for you in this particular season of life that you are in. You may want to adapt, you may wanna switch depending on your routine and what works best for you and your family. And so that's essentially what we did and I wanna share that with you guys. I wanna be open and I wanna explain why I'm switching from the multiple cash envelope daily spending to just the one. So hopefully this video won't take too long. And yes, I have a microphone right here. Yep. <laughs> so grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your drink of choice, and let's have a conversation. So the first thing that I want to address obviously is the main purpose of this video and explaining my reasoning of switching from these to just one envelope. If we were to look through my budget planner and I'll do like a quick flip through here on the screen you are seeing me flipping flipping through and you will see that I was negative on some of my categories and I'm looking at them right now so negative I was borrowing from one cash envelope to cover other expenses from another category and it was just kind of stressful to be perfectly honest granted I could have done a better job it could be user right it could be me obviously not having the right mindset and control over the spending. However, if we needed something, if I needed to go and get milk, I ran out of my grocery budget. I ran out of the funds, what am I gonna do? I then borrowed from like my spending to cover that or uh, we took from our cushion in the checking account and like factored it in. It ended up being a bit complicated. I'm not shaming multiple cash budget uh, for the variable. I truly love seeing my budget friends here on YouTube have success in that system, but sometimes it's okay to admit that it may not work for, for you in your lifestyle. And I'm here to admit that um, it hadn't been working for us. We are now using a one cash envelope system and this is nothing new. We have been doing it in the beginning and uh, we had much success with that. But then I was influenced by the budget community and the cash envelope system with the wallets and the cute envelopes. And I'm like, I have to participate in this. I need to switch things up. I need to do this. And we had been doing it for quite a while. And yes, we had some weeks were good. Some weeks were bad, but overall, I personally didn't see a sense of accomplishment in that. And so I'm having things change. Yeah. We're switching things up. Let's talk about a divide and conquer principle. And this is all taught by Jordan Page. I will be mentioning her name multiple times. So I'm sorry if that gets annoying to you, but I seriously had learned so much from her. She has a program called Budget Bootcamp and she talks about her whole budget system. She has a YouTube channel, check her out, she's awesome. She explains this whole principle of dividing up responsibilities in your household. We have a two family 
home, it's myself and my husband, and each of us do different things with our spending habits. It makes sense for me since I am at home, I'm the one that does the primary like cooking and the meals. So it makes sense for me to do the grocery shopping, right? And not my husband because he's out working and I'm home the majority of the time. So I am responsible for grocery shopping, making sure we have toilet paper, making sure we have laundry detergent and all of our household needs and also setting up doctor's appointments, making sure that we're paying our medical bills, all of that stuff. That is my responsibility along with my personal spending because guess what? There are times when I wanna go to Starbucks and get a nice drink. <laughs> There are times when I want to do that or if I want to buy some like nail press on stickers like I have now and it's okay. It's okay for me to want to do that and to have the budget to do that. And then my husband, he, he does a lot of eating out. He might want to buy a drink from Wawa when he's out at work and that's perfectly fine for him to do because we have a budget set up for that. So instead of me being in charge of the eating out money, why not have him, who is the one that does the majority of the eating out, we also go on date nights too, him being in charge and let's just put the money in his account because he doesn't use the cash envelope system. It's more convenient for him to just use his debit card and, and pay for things. Honestly, it's just, it. that's how it works in my household and it's okay. Personal finance is personal. Let's repeat that for the people in the back. Personal finance is personal. So what I am speaking on, it may not pertain to you, and that's perfectly okay. Right now in this season, it's working, and I hope that it will continue to work for us th for the rest of this month because we're trying this out for a few months and seeing if we see any changes in our budget, and I hope that we do, and find less stress. You guys, because I have been dealing with a bit of anxiety and I think simpling things down is going to be perfect for my mental health. If you don't know what the one envelope system is, but it's just something super simple. It looks like this. Two budget categories I am tracking. This is my responsibility. My husband has his. He's responsible for his checking account. I don't really look at that. This is my responsibility. I'm in charge of grocery and other. Other is exactly what it is. It's everything else. If I want to go spending, this is also, I included gas in here, but I'm not going to do that in the future. So that's going to drop because I like using my debit card at the pump. I know there are some gas stations that I've seen that you could save money using cash, but honestly, I just, I like just being at the pump, so I might get, I don't know, gift cards for the gas station, um, but get upside, you guys. You can get reimbursed using a card and you get cash back for that. And especially with the high rising gas prices, check out Get Upside because I've gotten a lot of cash back and transferred it into my bank account. There's no limit of what you can transfer. That's a whole side note, <laughs> but this is my responsibility. So if you see over on the right hand side, I used up all of the money and I was negative $8 and what, 66 cents? Yeah, $8 and 66 cents. And what I did, I didn't borrow from the following week. I took it from this category. And so it just worked out. So I still have $21 and 34 cents in my one cash envelope. And in here, I have the cash and I have the receipts. So it's a great way for me to track and all I do is I just fold it once and I put it in my cute little bag. This bag is from Amazon, I got it for Christmas. And I just keep it in here, you guys. I keep it in here and it fits nicely and there you go. So I have my little wallet and in this wallet, I still have my two bank little divider in case I were to use something on my debit card, I want to deposit it back in my account. I will just put the cash in there and then all my change. So that is, that's what we're doing. I don't want to overcomplicate things. Budgeting does not have to be complicated. It just needs to make sense to you and to your family. Again, personal finance is personal. So now I have a couple of questions that I received over on my Instagram. Let's start with number one. Anna Barrera had asked, do you have a video or tips on how to start saving when living paycheck to paycheck? I have a whole playlist of 
um, cash envelope and paycheck budgeting, I believe. But there's one in particular, I will link it, but it's a very popular video of mine and it's how to start a cash envelope system for beginners. And it breaks down the percentage budgeting method along with the cash envelope system and how, can you, and how you can use both of them together for success. So I hope that that helps you guys out with starting off or maybe revamping and revisiting um, a different budgeting method. So it's okay to switch things up. It's perfectly okay for you to admit that it may not work for you and you might want to just adjust accordingly. Maggie underscore cruise s dot IG had asked, do you often get mistaken by Tia Maori from sister, 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 sister? Mm -mm. Uh, I've been there's been so many comments on my YouTube channel that has said that and so yes the answer is yes side note but I mean can we can we just look at the similarity all right <laughs> all right next question is from M Nicole 43 and she had asked are you still keeping the one envelope in your wallet and what wallet are you switching to during the filming of this I had to pick up my dog from the groomer so my wallet is now downstairs but you saw that I just kept it folded and I kept it in my purse so I'm not incorporating another wallet to keep it it's just folded up and it's in my purse and I just carry that and make sure that it's with me at all times Anna Marie 414 ask how did you figure out your sinking funds so this is a great question i believe i might have a video explaining sinking funds and how you can figure out your number of what you are wanting to save each and every month but let's just use the example of christmas since not everyone but a lot of people do celebrate christmas and let's use the number 500 i'm going to take out my handy dandy calculator and we're going to put in the number 500 that is the goal amount so the first thing you want to do is you want to figure out what is your goal dollar amount how much money do you want to save for a vacation that you have gone go, planned for the upcoming year how many months that is from now until then that you have to have that total amount fully funded so in this example we are working with the number 500 and the goal is to save it by november for christmas presents okay so we are in march when i am filming this and let's just start with april as the full month that we're going to save the dollar amount so we have april may june july august september I said that weird October November so we have eight months you take your total dollar dollar amount and you're gonna divide it by the number of months that you have to fund that goal so in this example it gives us sixty two dollars and fifty cents we're gonna round that up to sixty three dollars that's every month you're wanting to save sixty three dollars for that specific sinking fund you break that down even further you take the 63 dollars and then you figure out well how often do you get paid in that month so the majority of people have a bi-weekly pay schedule at least those of you that follow me so we're going to use that as an example but obviously if you get paid every week so four times in a month you'll just divide it by four so 63 is the monthly goal amount and we're going to divide it by two if you are a bi-weekly pay person so that narrows it down even further and it gives us $31.50 so $31.50 is what you will set aside and stuff or minus the 50 cents but you will set that 31 or $32 aside specifically for Christmas in that given pay period if you get paid every week you will set aside $15.75 that's if there's four pays in a month. So I hope that that answers your question and breaks it down. But one thing I do wanna to mention to you as far as your categories go, make sure that you're looking ahead at those events that you tend to forget about. For example, your car registration renewal. So I'm very thankful that uh, we had remembered this sooner uh, or earlier because our car registration was due to expire this month in March because it expires typically the month of your birth 
date. So we had the money set aside throughout the year and we were able to pay that towards our registration renewal for her vehicle. So think about those things as well. June's Gravity had asked, how much do you invest in each category in your cash envelopes? So this all depends on what is left over after I've allocated for our needs. So the first thing that you want to do is focus on your needs. What is the most important thing that you are wanting to pay? Obviously, you want to pay your bills. You want to buy food and have gas in your car. So after all of those things, what do you have left over? Then you want to focus on what are your goals? Are you in debt? Maybe you want to take a percentage of that and throw it towards a debt payment as an extra debt payment, or you're wanting to plan something in the near future, like within the, th the next three months, put money specific for that. So it all depends on the season that you're in and what events that you have coming up. So look ahead. I love having my calendar and utilizing my calendar on my phone, mapping out and putting in things that I know we have planned. Like for example, this weekend we have a potluck scheduled with a friend of friends of ours. And so I know that the next payday, so this Friday when we get paid, I know we're going to have to pull money separate, budget out our other category for that event, for participating and bringing something to that potluck. So things like that you want to focus on. Sorry, my necklace was in and I wanted it out. So it all depends, again, based on what is left over in that particular pay, pay cycle because sometimes a lot of the bills are in the beginning of the month versus the end, so you might have less to work with in the beginning of the month versus the end of the month. But that's why I love using the bill tracker system. I have free downloads available on my website. You are more than welcome to grab yours there's no subscription needed for that. Just head on over to budgetessentialsco.com to get your freebies. I have packets of worksheets for budgeting, like meal planning and different things, cash envelopes, you name it, it is there for you to grab. You can also use the bill tracker that I have available there as well. I do have a video linked on how I use the bill tracker, so you can check that out. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see if I can respond to them. Or if you want maybe a dedicated video of my one envelope system, but we will be doing a weekly weigh-in. This is a new budget planner that I am using for my goal tracking and so i'm excited but i will have this linked i will have the one envelope linked and i have a coupon code if you're interested in that um definitely check it out but i love jordan page you you will know this is not me just advertising something that i don't believe in that is not what i am about go back to 2018 videos and you will see I've been using this method since the beginning and I am 100% supportive of it. I think it is going to change the game for our goals and we are going to save that $10,000 for our house down payment because I'm so ready to have a house of our own. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. It helps me out a lot and I will see you guys right here in a brand new video. Bye guys.